Good evening, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome to another segment of Creating Real Estate Millionaires. That's what we're about, ladies and gentlemen. We are creating real estate millionaires on the fly. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a very, very uh, important subject matter uh, that I want to speak to you about today, and that is tenant acquisition. How do you acquire uh, great tenants? Uh, this is a key part of the uh, millionaire mindset, right? It's not only do you have to uh, understand the numbers and you got to understand uh, what's going on in housing, but you got to make sure you get the right tenant in your property, right? So I want to talk about that today, the importance of making sure that you're getting the right tenants. So uh, our ground rules for the day are, are as usual. I want everybody to make sure uh, that you're muted during this call and uh, be sure to ask your questions in the comments section and uh, Johnny Woodfield will be answering those as I go through uh, the slide presentation. And as always, I will need your feedback uh, as we go through this. So our agenda for today, we're gonna to be talking about tenant acquisition. And when we talk about tenant acquisition, uh, we're just talking about how do you get um, how do you get quality tenants in your properties? So first of all, you got to be able to market to them. So what is the means by which you let tenants know that you have a property available? And then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the initial screening of tenants, and I'll take you through um, what's important to me. As far as screening, it should also be important to you as a potential millionaire. And we'll talk a little bit about the application process. The process has changed a little bit due to coronavirus, and I kind of want to let you guys know what I'm doing uh, in regards to making sure that uh, we're keeping everybody safe. And uh, as we go through the process of someone coming by, looking at your house, things like that. And then I want to go through my final selection criteria. So first of all, um, let me just check, make sure um, we're good. Uh, Johnny, are we good at this point? Yeah, we're good, Ray. All right, so let's keep going. So first of all, I only post uh, my rentals on Zillow. And when I post on Zillow, and I'll take you there in a, in a second here, uh, it actually will post on several different places. So I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, but for me, that's my main, the main reason that I, how I'm able to acquire tenants. Uh, a lot of times, uh, I won't even put a sign in the front yard. Um, and some say, well, Ray, how come you don't put a for rent sign out there? Because sometimes I just don't want people to know that that particular house is for rent, right? Uh, sometimes I will use a sign, sometimes I won't. It just depends. On this particular house, I probably won't use a sign because I'm getting enough traffic and action just based on what I'm posting on Zillow. And then sometimes I'll put a sign at the major intersection down the street from the house pointing to my house pointing people down uh, to know that I have a house for rent. So let's go to Zillow. This is where, let's share this screen, new share. So this is, um, this is Zillow. Make sure we're there. Yeah, we're there. So this is where uh, Zillow has a uh, a rental a rental place. There's a uh, there's stuff for sale on Zillow, and then they have the rental manager here. Okay. So my computer is acting up. Hopefully, we're still good. Hold on. So this is. Um, this is a Zillow rental manager, and it's not functioning properly. But as you see here, uh, let me see if I can click on my properties here. So 
So here are all of my properties uh, that I have on Zillow. Now, these are not all of my properties, uh, but these are some of the properties that I have, uh, uh, have, have had up for rent uh, in the last few years. So a lot of my properties, tenants have been there for 10 years or more, and I've never had to put them up for rent. But I have two listings on right now. I have a, a listing in Norman uh, that's going to be available in June, and I have this listing on 64. And uh, as, as you can see, if I click on my listing here, uh, this listing, uh, the one in Norman, uh, it actually will show you when I listed it, how many inquiries I've got, and it actually expires after 30 days. So every 30 days, if I don't have the property listed, I'll need to go back in there and relist it. This particular property is uh, $1,200 a month, 1,200 deposit. You can see all the information related uh, to this particular property. And I have pictures uh, for the property uh, that potential tenants will be able to see. If I go back to my properties, let's talk about the property that we're renting right now, which is um, 64th Street. Uh, this property I, I published yesterday and I've already got seven inquiries uh, off of this post. Uh, I had the property posted at $1,000 a month, and I got bomb bombarded with a lot of people wanting to rent it. So I went back immediately and raised the rent up to $1,200. So I can always go back and lower it, but if I'm getting too much action, that means I don't really have it set properly. So I raised the rent to uh, $1,200, and I'm still getting uh, inquiries uh, on this particular property. So this is uh, Zillow. It's the rental manager. You can go in and set up uh, an account uh, on Zillow and um, you can put all your properties in there. So uh, while I'm here, let me go ahead and show you a, a copy of my application. Uh, this is an application, uh, a digital application that I can send out to prospective tenants. Uh, and then they can send that back to me. I also have a copy of my move in, move out checklist. So when I do finally get a tenant, then I'll be actually uh, filling this out with them on the day that they move into the property. And this basically uh, tells them uh, what the condition of the property is when they move in it. That's the same exact condition that I will be expecting that property to be in when we move out. So it, it, uh, it's pretty exhaustive. It covers all the rooms. Uh, you want to look for things that need painting. If you need to replace things, just spot cleaning. But basically what I use this for is to make sure that there's no major damage to the property when I lease it to them. So that when, we, so that when they move out of the property at the end of the lease, then I can go back through this document and see were there any damages that were caused by the tenant. If so, then they would need to be responsible for that and that amount of damages will be taken out of their particular deposit. So I hope all that uh, makes sense again. Um, uh, this is my properties uh, back on Zillow. Uh, again, this, this is the best place that I've found um, in order to get, get out there letting people know that I have a property available for rent. Hey, Ray. Yeah. We got a question around, do you, do you uh, entertain every person that sends an inquiry to you, or do you have a pre-selection criteria that you go through? Ah, here we go. Now we're getting into my process. Stay tuned. Here we go to the process. So, initial screening by phone, all right? So you, you got to get past step one with me. So let's talk through what I do initially when they first call me or when they first when I first get an inquiry. The first question I ask is, are you currently employed? And if so, where and how long? Because to me, there's two important things that I want to know about my prospective tenant. Number one is, can they pay the rent on time? Number two is, will they take care of my property? Those are the two main issues that I'm interested in. And so I'll ask questions around, are you employed? Uh, if so, where and how long? If you just uh, got hired last week, uh, I'm probably not gonna let you in my property, right? Uh, if you haven't been on your job for at least a year or so, I'm a little bit skeptical of you, 
okay? And then I, I wanna know about your, your current monthly income. How much money are you currently making? Because um, my deal is if my rent's $1,000 a month and I saw you make is $1,000 a month, then you're not gonna qualify uh, for this particular property, right? I usually look for if, if, if someone is wanting to lease a property and I have a thousand dollars as the rent, I'm looking for that individual to at least bring home at least uh, $3,000. So I want uh, that rent to be no more than one third of their uh, take home pay. And then I'm gonna uh, ask them how much are they currently paying in rent? Because if they're paying $500 now and they wanna move into my house, that's a thousand dollars. That's a five hundred dollars swing. How can you afford that? So I'll ask some more questions uh, around that. And then I want to know why you're moving. Uh, uh, some of the reasons, the good reasons for moving, is we want more space. Uh, we, the neighborhood got bad. Uh, various things like that. If I ask them why they're moving, they said because my landlord wouldn't fix nothing, or uh, you know I had a problem with my. That's the kind of person I don't want. I don't want you running from one landlord to the next. That's an issue for me, right? So I'm always looking for red flags. Next, I want to know: Have you given your current landlord 30 day notice? Because if you're not, you're probably running out on him. You haven't paid him, and you're trying to come over and get my property. That's not going to work. So uh, I like the fact that people give 30-day notices where they are. That means if you have them as a tenant, that they're going to possibly give you a 30-day notice. All right. So that's a very important question. Again, I'm still I'm still on the phone with them. They haven't even uh, seen my house. Haven't even asked about the application or nothing. I'm screening them out real good right here. And then uh, the nine million dollar question: Have you ever been evicted? Uh, this is a red flag right here. If you've got people uh, that are uh, in the process of being evicted or they've been evicted in the last two years, that's a concern for me, right? And sometimes I will allow them to talk through it and tell me why they got evicted. Sometimes it might be a legitimate reason. Most time for me, it's not. If you got evicted, that's a, uh, that's a bad deal for me. I'm probably not going to let you in my property. How many adults are gonna occupy the house? This is important because I don't want 10 adults in my three bedroom home, right? Uh, you wanna make sure that uh, there's no more than, uh, I mean, if there's, if there's more than three adults in the room, uh, in, the, in the house, and to me, that's an issue. Uh, I, I can't have that many adults in the house. And normally, I don't, I don't like to deal with roommates, so uh, I'm looking to lease to families and single individuals. So if it's a roommate issue, you know, even with my house down in Norman, um, I don't like to do roommates, but I will. But uh, that's why I asked that question. I want to know how many adults are occupying the house. And do you have pets? I don't do pets. Pets tear up your stuff. Pets don't care about anything. I don't want pets on my property. I don't care if little foo foo. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he, he's not going to do anything. He's not going to tear up anything. But you're right because he's not going to be on my property. And then I want to know how many children you have. You said, Ray, why is that important? Because uh, if you've got, if I got a two bedroom house and uh, you got five kids, that's not going to work. Okay. That's not going to work. I'm trying to make sure, again, that I'm screening. So after this first step, if I feel good and I got good answers to all of these questions, then and only then am I willing to go to step two. Step two. So uh, I went through the questionnaire. Uh, I decided that this tenant is a potential. Now I'm going to allow the tenant to view the property. So first of all, I'm going to have the tenant to to text me a copy of their driver's license. And the reason why you want a, uh, a copy of the driver's license is because you want to know who it is that's going in your property, right? And uh, once I get that driver's license, I will then send the code to the lockbox. I always put a lockbox on the front door of the property and I give them the code to that lockbox so they can go ahead and enter the property. I don't have to be there. Uh, I'm not really worried about them stealing anything because there's nothing to steal. It's a vacant property. So I'm okay with letting them in the property. And then I request that the tenant call me back after they view the property and let me know if they're interested, they got any concerns, any issues, things like that. So at that point, 
Um, if, if I'm good, if I've, if I've let them get to step two, they looked at the property like it, the next process is to look at uh, the, ac the application. So at this point, I'm now going to send the prospective tenant an application. And I showed you that application, it's electronic, they'll fill it out, they'll send it back to me. Once I get that application back, now on that application, I'm asking for employment, I'm asking for references, I'm asking, have they ever been evicted? I want to know who their previous landlord is. I'm getting all this information, bank information, the type of vehicles they got, all that's on that application. And so what I'm going to do, as soon as I get that application, I'm now going to verify employment, right? And so I will call and, and just verify that they work at the place that they told me they worked at. Some individuals, uh, companies, they'll only verify that they work there. They won't get you, give you any other information, which is fine. All I want to know is that they work there. And then sometimes I will check uh, their references. A lot of times I won't because they'll give you references. And so whoever the reference is, is going to give them a good, uh, give them a good feed, going to give you good feedback on them because it's their reference, right? But uh, what I will do is go down and check the county records and make sure that they've never been evicted. And that information is located at the county. And I can, I'll show you, I'll show you that on another day. I'm not going to go through that today. But there is a process that you can go down and you can find out if they've been evicted. And then my last check is uh, I will call the previous landlord and I want to understand uh, what their relationship was with their landlord, how long they've been there. Most landlords are willing to share that information. A lot of apartment complexes will not give you that information. They ask you that you, you have to fax them information regarding who I am, who I'm with, and things like that. And then they only give you a little bit of information. But a lot of uh, private landlords, like myself, we're willing to share. Hey, was that a bad tenant? Yeah, they left the house trashed out. They didn't pay their bills on time. All that is good information that I want to be able to uh, have as part of my application process determining whether or not I want this individual in my house, right? Makes sense. And now we get down to my step four, which is my final selection criteria. And so these are some of the criteria that I use in determining uh, if I'm gonna rent to a prospective tenant. First of all, their ability to pay rent on a timely matter is, in, is, is important to me. And always, again, I like to use the 50% rule. Uh, if uh, if they if the rent is a thousand dollars, then they have to at least make two thousand a month. I really like to see them make uh, three thousand a month, but at a minimum, uh, no more than half of their total income can be used for my rent. Because if it, if it's more than that, they're probably going to have a hard time uh, paying the rent. Then I'm going to be looking at their previous rental history. How long did they stay? in the last home they were, or, or are they skipping around every six months? Or they've been in the last place for 10 years? That's the kind of individual I want. That's been in the same place for 10 years, and now they're moving for whatever reason. Maybe uh, the owner's selling the house. Maybe the neighborhood's gone bad. There could be several reasons why, why people are wanting to move in a legitimate reason. So I, I want to know what their previous rental history was. And then they can't have any evictions uh, in the last 24 months. That's just key for me. If you've been evicted in the last uh, two years, uh, last 24 months, then that's an issue for me. And then I, I'm going to look at the living arrangements. Are, are they married? Uh, or do you just have two people living together? Do you have roommates? I mean, uh, to me, uh, I want a single individual, number one, because they're going to uh, – cause less damage and less wear and tear on your property, or I want to marry individuals uh, that have good, stable uh, jobs, because that means that uh, they probably, if they like the house, they'll stay there. If I'm providing them a clean, safe, uh, affordable, functional property, they'll stay there, right? And then I'm looking for, uh, will they take care of my property? You say, Ray, how are you going to know whether they're going to take care of your property or not? A lot of times I will look at uh, 
the vehicle that they pull up in. How well do they take care of their vehicle? Is it all falling down on the side? Is smoking coming out the back? Is one door got a hinge? I mean, is that the way uh, that they're going to take care of my property? Same way they take care of their car? Probably is. So to me, that's an indication. And then lastly, and certainly not least, are they generally nice people? One thing you don't want is a problem in your property. So if as I'm interviewing uh, the prospective tenant and you know, I already can tell they may have an attitude about some or they going around, they, they pointing out little things that's wrong with my house. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting back thinking, there's no way I'm gonna lease you this property because you a problem already. So I, I don't want more problems, right? The key to making sure that you select good tenants is making sure that you get people that are going to pay your rent, they're going to take care of your property, and they're not going to be calling you all hours of the night, right? This is key right here. Uh, you want passive income. You don't want actively uh, being involved with tenants calling you all the time, bugging you about stuff that uh, don't really have nothing to do with uh, you renting that property and, and, and providing them a good property. So again, when I say generally nice people, I mean just people that are cordial, people that talk to you nice. If they show up with an attitude, I'm done, I'm gone. I don't have pretty much anything else uh, to do with you at that point. Because I, as the owner of this property, I have the right to select anyone I want for this, uh, this property. Now I can't discriminate, and be very clear, I can't discriminate, but I have uh, a large latitude when it comes to selecting the type of person that I'm gonna allow in my property. So I think right there, uh, selection criteria, I think we can start asking questions at this point. That's all of my form. I'm gonna go over our, um, I'm gonna go over our, our quiz that we had because uh, a lot of people had questions about that. But right now, let's go ahead and, and, and open it up for any questions that you might have regarding tenant acquisition. Hey, Ray, one, a couple questions that was posted around and you touched on it here at the end, but maybe expand on it, which is how do you ensure you don't get yourself caught in a discriminatory issue or any legal issues associated with uh, screening? So it's, it's very important that, uh, again, that you don't screw. You can't say, well, I don't want you in my property because you're white, because you're black, because you have a disability, because I don't like the way you look. No, you, you, use, these, uh, you use these criteria that I'm using right here. Uh, you, you know, you don't make enough money, right? You don't have a good rental history, right? You had evictions, uh, you know, uh, things like that you keep it to the facts and not so much as the individual person again uh, you cannot discriminate just because uh, you don't like uh, a person's hair you, you, you I'm not gonna lease to you so uh, I hope that helps uh, from that standpoint All right, any more questions? Let's see here. All right, so not hearing any questions. I'm gonna go to- Ray, there's some questions, Ray, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was trying to flip back and forth, sorry. You I'm got sorry. a question, how do you tell a person you won't rent because they are not nice? <laughs> I don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell them that they're not nice. I, a lot of times I'll just tell them um, uh, we'll, I'm, I've decided to lease it to somebody else. How about that? There's also a question around the uh, would you rent to Section 8? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't do Section 8 anymore. I used to do Section 8 when I started off. Uh, there was the, the reason why I did Section 8 because Section eight, if once you get through the approval process, it's pretty much uh, pretty much guaranteed money. It's gonna come to, to your uh, to your mailbox every month without even having to go through the tenant. But what I found out in section eight is, is that these inspectors that they that they send out there, they are not gonna pass you the first time. 
first of all, you have to wait two to three weeks to even get set up for an inspection. Then they come out at the inspection. They fail you because you have a little chip a uh, broken little piece of window, and then they take two more weeks to get back out there. Before you know it, you've lost a whole month of income. So what I found out is that a lot of these uh, inspectors, they're out there trying to make it a point, you know, we're going to get these rich landlords and taking advantage of people. And you know, I, mean, I don't have time for that. That's, it's just too much. So I don't do Section 8 anymore, mainly because of the inspectors. They they have it out uh, for landlords in my humble opinion. What else y'all got? That's all I see, Ray. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and open it up. If you guys uh, want to go ahead and uh, open your microphones up, we can go ahead and talk a little bit uh, rather than typing in at this point. Just want to scream out a question to Mr. Ray. Go right ahead. Hey, Mr. Ray, this is Darren Lampke. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, how would you respond if they, I, I, you already addressed the dog question, but what if they also want to add a trampoline or a swimming pool in the backyard? How would you respond? Um, I've never uh, said no that you can't do those things. Just know that they come with risk. Uh, if you got a trampoline back there, um, I mean, they can get hurt. It's on your property. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I, I would I would just say I, I would advise them not to. Now, people can do whatever they want to do, but you can tell them don't do that and they'll still do it. But you're not really liable at, at that point. If you've told them not to have it back there and they have it back there, then that's on them. So. Yeah, I don't really do those uh, swimming pools and uh, trampolines. Uh, people get hurt too easily. Okay, last question. What if they, uh, even though it's in your contract, your rental agreement, and they uh, bring, they sneak a pet in the property anyway? All right, you, you, you give them a 24-hour uh, notice to have that... Uh, that that uh, particular uh, <laughs> let me see how I can say it to remedy that issue uh, they have basically are in violation of the lease and if they don't remedy that within 24 hours then you will start the eviction process that's what I would do okay thank you sir so I had a um, question um, oh sir yes sir uh if <clears throat> it will it be um a time to uh, would it be a, a different time you'd go over as far as uh how to go over the eviction process yes that's that's uh that's a that's a whole subject in and of itself so yes we'll uh we'll address that uh in, in one of my future um meetings for sure okay all right uh and just one one thing um do you uh, as far as getting the deposit, uh, do you set up a separate account for each property uh, as far as keeping that that money for that or or how do you go? Uh, I have uh, one account that's for all my deposits. It's a savings account and it's just for deposits. And you okay. should keep your deposits separate from your other monies. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes. Uh, for the monthly collection of the rents, are they mailed in? You pick them up? How does this happen? Great question. So I used to be that guy riding around, picking up rent, pocket full of money. Look at me. I'm flossing. No. I know that's right. Okay. Do not uh, start the process of picking up money. Now, I know sometimes uh, little old lady, I can't make it to the bank, and would you come by? I may do that once or twice, but uh, for the most part, I would say make sure they mail it in or they find another way uh, to get you those funds rather than you having to stop by there. It's just, it gets messy, 
Uh, what I found out a lot of times when you come by to pick up the check, they always find something wrong with the property they want to tell you about, right? So I don't even got time for that. Just mail me my money and we good. Yeah, right. On my properties, I don't let anybody rent for me that is not willing to let me auto draft their account. Uh, that's, 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 I've got a few of them that I do auto draft. I don't require it, but that's probably, uh, that's probably a, a, a good thing to do. Because then there's never anything like, oh, I'm a little bit short or I'll have it tomorrow. Yeah, but what happens if you draft and the money's not there? Well, the bank notifies you. Right, but I'm saying you got the same issue. You didn't collect rent. But then you can start the. There's no. There's no interaction between you and the. the uh, nobody's trying to play on your sympathies. Oh, the baby's sick, or I couldn't go to work. I couldn't get my paycheck. It's they they have to be responsible adults and that's the only kind of people i want to rent to but just yeah but again again if you draft it's the same way is if they don't pay my rent i still have to start the eviction process i'm not going to get my money either way that's right right okay it sort of takes all the emotional charge out of it oh cut me a break and all that i just yeah just send the take the eviction notice over there <laughs> yeah, I like that. Put on the door. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, you said that you typically don't rent to people who haven't been at their job for at least a year. What about mm -hmm. people who are moving into town from somewhere out of town? Yeah, that's different. Uh, if they're coming in from out of town and I can verify that they are coming from out of town, that's different. Uh, I will allow them to, but they at least have to be on their other job for at least uh, a year where they're coming from. Then I guess one other thing to, especially since you have houses in Norman, which obviously a college town, uh, you said you don't really like roommates, but you'll sometimes do that. How careful are you with that or like, what are your process with their roommates? So my process with roommates is I make uh, all roommates are on the hold on. Let me mute everybody. So uh, I make sure that uh, all the uh, prospective uh, roommates are on the lease, and uh, and I also make sure that if one one roommate leaves, then the other roommates are on the hook. Uh, for the remaining rent. So just because you got three people there and y'all pay it three different ways, I don't really care who pays it. But if that month, if that full rent is not paid, let's say two of them want to pay, the other don't have theirs, I'm still uh, going to go for the eviction because you haven't paid my rent. And that's why I don't like to do roommates because it gets sicky like that. Okay, I, I got uh, one question. If uh, if they are late on the rent, uh, do you have a certain amount that you you charge, or you would say uh, a chance to pay it with a late fee, or do you have a certain amount of late fees? Or um, yeah, so I do. Um, so my rent is due on the first. Uh, if it's paid by the third, it's good. If it's paid on the fourth, there's an automatic twenty five dollar uh, late fee. And then I charge what I, I'll say this, and I don't really charge, I'll say it's $10 a day for every day that you lay uh, after the fourth. If you go down to the uh, county and you try to evict someone and you try to enforce that $10 a day, you won't get that. All you'll get is a $25 late fee. I just add the $10 a day just to, to put the scene factor on to make them, make them really pay me, right? So uh, it's $25 really a flat fee uh, after the fourth. If they don't pay the rent by the 10th, then I'm looking for eviction. I, you know, sometimes I'll go to the 10th, but really my lease says, if you go, if you go past the 10th and you basically broken the lease, the lease is null and void. And now, I mean, we're in the process of eviction. But if you talk to me for people that have been with me for a while and just let me know, hey Ray, I'm not gonna be able to pay you to the 10th. I'll pay you with the late fee, everything included, then we're good. I'm fine with that. Hey, Ray, I'm pretty sure that uh, 
a fee per day that you're late is illegal, it says in the tenant. Well, yeah, that's what I just said. I, I say you can't get away with it. I, I stick it in there because I want to put that, uh, the fear factor on them. But I can't really collect that, that $10 a day. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to ask another question. Um, you didn't say anything about collecting an application fee. I really don't do an application fee um, because I screen them so good. By the time I give you an application, you're pretty much going to be a tenant of mine. So I don't, I don't charge an application fee because I screen them so well. I probably on this house, I'll probably give out two or three applications and that's it. One of those individuals will get the property. So then what do you say to somebody who you've already sort of mentally eliminated? They say, I, I want an application. You just say, well, no. You don't qualify for this property. And then when they say, how do I not qualify? Then I'll go down the list. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't make enough money. You don't have a good rental history. You got big evictions. Da 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 da. da. I'll just go down the line, and okay. one of them will sit. Okay. All righty, so it looks like we're coming to the end here. I want to say thanks for everybody who's coming on. Great questions. Uh, make sure that, uh, uh, that you understand that this tenant selection process is one of the most important pieces of being a real estate millionaire. You want quality tenants in there. It's going to pay your rent. It's going to take care of your property, and you're not going to hear from them. That's the rule. That's the golden rule, getting quality tenants. So everybody have a great day. We'll see you. Uh, we'll be back Thursday. We're going to do a real-time Thursday. I got a good project going. I'm going to be sharing with you guys. It's a, it's a nice rehab, $15,000, $20,000 rehab. So a lot of moving pieces. So I'll be sharing that with you guys. So everybody have a great day, and we will talk at you later. Thanks, Ray. See ya. Thank you. We're not going to go over the. Nah, we're running out of time. I'll do it on Thursday. Thank you, sir. All right.